Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Tom. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Um, those who don't know me, my name is Tom, Tom Osborne. I'm a Detective Chief Superintendent in Crime Services of SAPOL. But the reason we asked you to come this afternoon was because of the uh, media that's gone on during the week and the events that have happened not only this week but last week. Uh, since the 5th of August, there have been six incidents um, of violence whereby in four of them, uh, there was arson attacks on houses where petrol was poured on um, the front doors of houses and ignited or on vehicles out the front. Uh, and in two of the incidents, shots were fired from a vehicle or from vehicles at the front of the premises. Uh, the inherent danger with each, any of those acts is, is apparent to everyone. Uh, I mean, if shooting, a, shooting a, discharging a gun into a house, uh, it's got a high probability that you will either injure or kill someone. And we've all heard of incidents where people have been shot. Uh, and the arson attack where you're setting fire to a house with people inside the house um, has got the potential of killing innocent people or even if they're not innocent, there's still the potential of kill, kill, killing people. Um, so towards, that, towards uh, ensuring that uh, there's absolute assurance uh, in those that are doing this, uh, committing these acts, uh, today's SAPOL in almost an unprecedented uh, uh, act has uh, searched 28 premises. Uh, we use firearms prohibition orders, which uh, these are people that residing in those premises have these orders uh, and are, reason, uh, are by reason of uh, their, 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 their criminal association, members of criminal organisations, declared criminal organisations, or by reason of their past uh, character have had firearms prohibition orders issued to them. In those uh, 28 premises, uh, we found uh, one firearm, we found ammunition in other premises, we found some drugs. Um, we're not saying that the people who were in those particular premises were necessarily involved in any of these acts, but that is just uh, day one of uh, SAPOL's uh, offensive against the, the particular people that are committing the, these crimes. Uh, we, we firmly believe that, uh, that the, the crimes are being committed by OMCG members. Um, we're not saying, obviously, that there's very many OMCG members involved in this, these particular acts of violence that have gone on for the last couple of weeks but certainly there's a handful uh, who are creating absolute peril for the community and, and, the, com and the community's got the right to live in a, uh, be free of uh, such acts. I mean, every morning you read about it or you see it on your television or you people are reporting it. Um, so the message I really want to get out to the OMCG members, and there's uh, several hundred in this state, and to their families, their associates, is that police will not stop until we actually bring these people to justice, the ones that have committed these particular acts. And those that wish to... Uh, to you know, replicate what's been happening, and we know it's happened in the past and it will happen in the future. SAPOL has got a very clear message that uh, they want to keep looking over their shoulders because the police will hunt them down. Uh, only yesterday we arrested a person for uh, shooting into a premises back in, I think it was February this year. Uh, that is one of the, out of that particular act, out of that particular two uh, attacks on how, a particular house, uh, three people have been arrested, a couple last month and one this month. Uh, and, I, 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 and to show really how what's, what the community or what the courts regard this act, uh, last month or, or July, June or July this year, a person got seven years uh, in the Central District Criminal Court for, for uh, the offensive act to endanger life, which clearly shooting in the premises is. So I uh, invite questions from you, but as I said, the real message here is that SAPOL will not stand aside and let this happen and continue to happen. Do you know the same We certainly believe that it's a small group. I'm not, not sure how many people, but it would be the same people uh, tit for tat. Uh, it's not necessarily gang on gang. It's individuals on individuals who may belong to different gangs. Right, so you've said before that it was Hells Angels and Associates, but you're not ruling out other gangs? Uh, certainly, as we know, and uh, it was back on the Thursday, the 8th of August, a food van got burnt down at uh, Mile End. That, we understand, was owned by a Hells Angel member who has re recently been arrested for um, the De Osio murder. So there's Hells Angels involvement in it, and whether that, we're not quite sure what the, uh, what the relationship with that person to the, these other acts is. Uh, ultimately, it's most probably drugs, drug related. I mean, that's stock and trade for OMCG members, that's how they make their money, and they're violent. But that, I mean, their, their stock and trade is violence, and um, the, the more uh, danger you present, then you get people to, to acquiesce and, and go along with what you want to do. So, um, whether it's uh, Hell's Angels or which particular gangs, we're not absolutely certain. We, I mean, we've got some information which suggests, 
I suggest which gangs it may be, but it's certainly not across all gangs, and it's not across all members of the particular gangs. And the gentleman that was arrested today, does he have ties to a particular gang? He does. Are you expecting to lay further charges in relation to that person? Uh, he, he's been, the person who was detained this morning has been detained for breach of home detention. I understand that he was uh, serving a sentence at home, so and he was contravention <coughs> of that. I'm not certain whether he'll be charged with anything further, no. Does he live at that address? I don't know. He was a victim in a shooting uh, uh, back in 2015, and that's matters been uh, before the court. And has he been involved in any of these incidents? Uh, I don't know. Certainly, certainly, that's one of the premises we searched this morning on the, in furtherance of this investigation. Uh, I can't say he was involved in any of these incidents. And this morning's shooting, who was inside? How many people were inside the house at the time? I don't know. I understand there was one shot. Uh, and it may have ricocheted, ricocheted off the off a wall or the front of the house and uh, and into a, uh, a veranda post. Um, but I think what's also important here is that this, this attack this morning and it happened in a cul-de-sac at West Lakes at 7:30 or about 7:30 in the morning. I mean, this is not a, this is not an incident occurring in an isolated location. Where it's not likely to be other people around or get involved in it. And I think it's also important that some of these premises that have been attacked in the last week. People who they're presumably looking for are not necessarily living those premises anymore. I mean, people move frequently, and you have innocent people suddenly having shots fired at their houses. But I really want to stress the danger that presents. I guess, yeah, do you fear that it's only a matter of time until someone innocent is seriously injured? Well, thankfully, it hasn't happened at this stage, not in this particular series, but the potential is always there and it could happen. And we, I can't say it won't happen because if you do those sort of acts, you know, you're, you're potentially a murderer. You said that today was the first in possibly a series of raids. Do police have more of these kind of searches planned? Uh, not necessarily these searches, but we are going to continue uh, with a very ramped up uh, approach over the next few days, and we'll continue to do so until we bring these people to justice. Um, as I said, the, the three people got arrested in the last one yesterday and one a couple of last month or the month before. That offending happened several months ago. So these things take time. It would be stupid for me to say that uh, we're going to bring this to resolution quickly and bring those people to justice quickly. But as I said, they need to look over their shoulder because we're going to keep hunting them. And those 28 properties that were searched, how are they identified? Uh, they, they are the residences of the people who have firearms prohibition orders against them. So they were just randomly selected? No, they, they weren't randomly selected. They were based on... Uh, on likelihood, but not all those people uh, uh, we believe to be involved. In fact, most of those people we wouldn't believe to be involved. But um, the firearms prohibition order ensures compliance with with uh, with uh, firearms regulations. Ensures those people don't have <coughs> uh, firearms, um, and that's why we search them. And you've got these six um, incidents that are all linked. Do you, can you rule out the possibility there might be other that others that could be linked as well? Are you investigating another? The, I mean, the, 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 they're the ones we know about. I mean, there certainly could be other uh, incidents that haven't been reported and we don't know about. We really only know the ones that, uh, you know, when you attack a house uh, with fuel or you fire shots through someone's house, that it comes very well and uh, known very quickly. And mentioned here the 28 premises, including some prison cells. Can you talk to us about um, that? The, the Department of Correctional Services undertook uh, inspections of cells occupied by OMCG members today. Uh, I understand the remand centre. Was it not that I know of. Final question, please. Through which remand centre is that, sir? Remand, Adelaide Remand Centre. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen.